when we were campaigning for the new constitution, Kenyan people were promised a lot of things. And most of them knew that with the coming in of uh, county governments, all their problems will be sorted once and for all. And it became really a challenge. And uh, for Elgeo Marakwet, uh, during the second financial year, we realized now that it was a challenge. And that triggered then, uh, the county assembly to come up with a, a bill, uh, an equitable development act. Now, devolution and generally the, the, the whole concept of us changing the constitution, there was, um, I think, a credible belief that marginalization was a big issue in Kenya and we needed to change the way we distribute resources as a country. Uh, even before devolution, there were a couple of things that we were trying out uh, to try and improve the situation. So you had, you know, little funds here and there, CDF being one of those, very celebrated by MPs. I don't know about you guys. Uh, but that still continues even after we changed the constitution in that there is still a belief that as we are dealing with issues of marginalization, we'll create little funds here and there. So CDF has become very big. Uh, counties have also started trying to create their own little CDFs with their own development funds. So there is still um, a belief that we need to think about the inequalities that exist within the country. But the approach that we take and the discussions that we are having, as Jason mentioned earlier, is slightly different from um, a broader discussion that covers uh, a broader spectrum than just uh, the little funds and the CDFs of this world. Now, while devolution is great and those funds have their own merits, the discussion about the bigger budget and how equitable the distribution of that bigger budget is has remained non-existent, in fact, in many of the conversations. at research on the health workers, for example, we saw that there is some positive impact of devolution towards uh, resolving the inequalities as well that were present prior to devolution. So we see that devolution, because spending of health, health sector is driven by counties, we see devolution as a, a positive thing in the country because we can tell that things are changing for the better in the counties where the counties have control. But at the national level, it's still status quo. They are spending as they used to spend. So uh, there could be implications for that. But what we could say is devolution indeed has had positive impact on um, equity in this country. Let's look at the pre-devolution uh, situation. Three things. At the time of devolution, there were certain um, inequalities, and we're going to look at three. We see that there was an equal spending. There was obviously an, an equal number of health workers. And when we look at the distribution of um, county residents per health workers was also an equal. And we also look at the skill mix at the beginning of devolution. Then now we look at post-devolution. We got from seven counties, and what we see is an increase in health workers, a positive, in, uh, a positive change in health workers, but it's not uh, similar. So you see counties like Samburu, there's 13% increase in health workers, and counties like Tukana, for those 10 categories, 232% um, increase in health workers. So it's a significant increase. But, when, but um, the trick is just look at the numbers. Still, they don't have as many health workers as they would need for the county, okay? But there's positive change. One of the things that devolution has done, I mean, the most obvious is the fact that management of health services in terms of implementation is at the county level. So that means that in one way, we expect, and we have seen actually, that different counties have come up with different interventions. It has also, I think, in a big way helped to, to locate the need yeah, in terms of where is it that uh, we don't have enough doctors and nurses, where is it that we don't have dispensaries. And we have seen, you know, cases like we covered in our, in, in, during the Equity Week uh, around 
employment of doctors and nurses you find Turkana has employed you know a huge number of doctors and nurses West Pokot has built health uh, health health units and uh, dispensaries so different in, different 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 uh, actors but the other thing that we also devolution has done is that it has also in a way raised the stick of healthcare provision in the sense that uh, when there is a problem people know that they don't need to fight to go to Nairobi they can just go to their county headquarters and things will be fixed overall Overall, when I look at uh, healthcare before devolution and healthcare after devolution, uh, when, when, when we look at it really, really closely, you realize that devolution has been such a good thing to, to health system in the country. Because of two things. One, um, infrastructure-wise. There are places where to get a dispensary, you know, it would be so hard. But then post-devolution, we've had, you know, also for political goodwill, these governors want to be re-elected. So they, they throw a dispensary here, upgrade a hospital there, you know, for their own re-election, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, like someone raised it earlier, sometimes you don't think about the personnel. So whereas the infrastructure is being improved, the software, the soft skills are not being improved. The second thing that devolution has really helped us with, and, and it has spread it now to even areas like uh, Kibera South, in a facility like that, you'd never find a medical doctor. But right now, we have medical doctors there. When we talk about uh, uh, the development, we always talk about good governance, inclusivity, participation, and consultative approaches. But when you just ask yourself that with good governance, with good participation, without equity, will our people be satisfied that we are doing the right things? And we realize that however much we prudently utilize our resources, Without that equity, our people could not understand and even appreciate uh, the, 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 the good practices that we, we are um, applying. What is equitable? Do you just divide the resources to all the words and you start implementing projects? What are the parameters that we need to consider before doing all these things? So there are so many perspectives, but as El Geo Maracuet, we tried a formula and I think that formula is working. Uh, through this act, 60% uh, of uh, our development budget were shared equally among the 20 wards. And the remainder, the 40% uh, were shared uh, based on uh, population. Uh, of the 40%, 38% were shared um, uh, based on population. We also had uh, county flagship projects, which we uh, we gave them 23%, poverty index 22%, uh, the land area 8%, emergencies, uh, we took 5% of uh, the 40% development to go to emergencies and fiscal responsibility and also uh, bearing in mind the uh, diversity of our county. We know we have areas which are semi-arid and other areas are uh, well of they receive enough uh, rainfall throughout the year. And uh, I think uh, through this formula, uh, somehow the people of El Geo are uh, appreciating uh, devolution. And we've been uh, trying to see how we can improve on this act. Uh, remember it was done by the uh, first county assembly. And as we uh, continue uh, working with our new uh, county assembly. We are yet to have another sitting and just share the uh, challenges, share the successes of this act and see how we can uh, further improve on it. They have been to West Pokot, they built a doctor's plaza and they budgeted for that in 2015-16 and 2016-17. Same case to Samburu, they are trying to put um, staff houses in their, their county and um, the offering means of transport, like their motorbikes, to go to those areas that are hard to reach. And then for El Geo Marafet as well, they're trying to put residential facilities for um, their health workers. 
And then um, we seen Samburu, they promoted staff just to encourage them to stay in their county. And then we are seeing that um, in counties like El Marraquet, they're improving their working environment. So they're trying to attract and retain um, um, health workers through various strategies. One of the good things that um, we did with devolution is that we decided we needed to have a more predictable approach uh, to how we distribute resources across the country. And across the country in these terms, came regions which are counties and so we have a formula that guides how much money goes to each county. Now if you look at that formula it has a couple of things in it. So we distribute those resources based on issues such as population, how poor the counties are. We do have an equal share that we give to each county. Uh, we have something on fiscal discipline which we are still struggling to define. We've tried but we are not yet uh, there yet. But also we look at the vastness of the areas. Uh, so because if you're in a, you know, a, 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 wide, a wide county then probably you need more money to distribute or to get services to people. So that's basically what we use. And, and I think one of the things that has been good about that is that it's a formula that is designed in a way that it ensures that you're giving money to where there is need. And so the higher the population in a place, probably the more money you need as a government in that county to provide services. But at the same time, it does have a redistributive angle to it, which is really the poverty part. So the poorer you are, the more money you get. So in those two fronts, we've made some steps, but then there is still a challenge because when you think about population and poverty, we don't give any direct money to those things. You know, you give money for health depending on how sick the population is. So if you have two counties with the same population but one population is sicker than the other one, then it's really not fair to give an equal amount to both counties. So there is still a challenge in that the parameters that we are currently using are really based on proxies of need rather than the direct need that exists in these places. And so going forward, as we get into 2018 and we are thinking of uh, revising this formula because we have to revise it, uh, then it's, uh, it will be an opportunity for CRA to try and bring in a couple of direct measures of these needs because it means counties will be better placed to meet those needs when they are getting money that is measured according to what they have to provide. And so uh, as a commission, when we came on board in the year 2011, we came up with a policy and by 2013, we had done a policy. And this, in this policy, we identified areas that are um, marginalized. And we used a county as a unit of analysis. One, because of data. We didn't have enough data to go to lower areas. Two, that time, you know, there was this hype about devolution. And everything was uh, county-based. Eh? So we were carried by that weight. And so we used county as our unit of analysis. And we identified 14 counties, and they're listed there, Turkana being one of them, Mandera, Wajia, Masabit, Samburu, West Pokot, Tana River, Narok, Kwale, Garissa, Kilifi, Taveta, Isiolo, and Lamu counties. And this we did using a lot of uh, various approaches, as I will explain later. Now, this policy has been uh, in use for the last three years. 2014, 15, and 16, to share revenue from the Equalization Fund. Remember, the role of the commission is only to come up with a policy. Somebody else shares the policy, shares the revenues, and gives the money to these areas. And this somebody else is the national government. So we do a policy, we come up with a criteria, then hands over the criteria to the government to, to implement. And then there's something that uh, Marraquet County, for instance, uh, is doing, which most of these other counties in the far-flung areas are also doing, which, which has really helped us with equity in terms of distribution of, of services. Um, doctors traditionally wanted to be near Nairobi or near big towns, Kisumu, Mombasa. In these areas, when you're a specialist, uh, apart from working in the government, you can also set up your clinic and run it. And so there was no motivation for a doctor to want to stay in Marraquet or for a doctor to want to, to work in Marsabit. But then some county governments, interestingly, in the pay packs for doctors, which uh, is not announced, is that they offer you like uh, 
uh, return ticket for two uh, in a month, like to and fro from the city. So they lure people to go and work there with a the promise that at least every month you have a return ticket to the capital city. And, and so that, that alone is, is, a, is something that is interesting people who have families. Because at times, you know, you've already established your family here and someone is sending you to Wajir. And, and you think about it, you say, ah, let me go into private practice. Okay, well, I may as well just quit government. But now doctors have the incentives and um, some counties pay allowances for people to work in those areas under the category of hardship allowances. So that is something that is really a plus. When we look at the research that was done on infrastructure, we see that um, actually then the, what was being done before is still being done, okay? So we are spending more, for example, in Nairobi and Kiambu and such counties on infrastructure, and that is the national government. Now, in 2016-2017, in the national budget, the government, for some good reason, decided that they were going to present the development budget not so much in terms of the monies for development going to the departments within ministries, but they decided that they were actually going to list each individual project under the departments and ministries at the national level. Of course, it's, a, it's, it's a quite a huge number of projects, but we decided to focus on the State Department for Infrastructure and the State Department uh, for Water Services. For roads, and let me start with uh, roads at the top, for the scenarios where we could tell where a project was to be in terms of counties, this is the spread you see in terms of allocations. As you can see, the top 10 has what I would call the usual culprits. Nairobi is at the, at the top of all the 47 counties and the allocation made to those projects, 22 or basically 23% of that allocation is for the county that you guys are in, which is Nairobi. Then followed by Mombasa with about 16%. So you can see just those two counties take almost half of the budget, okay? So that's something interesting to note. Now, if you look at the bottom, Vihiga, Lamu, and the rest, they're almost getting nothing. So you can see there are eight counties actually that had zero. So ideally, you can see that 73, or basically 74% of the budget was allocated to just the top 10 counties. So 37 counties shared a quarter of the budget. When you go to our wards, you will realize that we usually conduct something called public participation, where these people from the same ward come to one place and they discuss how they share their resources between themselves. We, we, realize one very, uh, we have realized one very serious issue, whereby when you are the host, for example, a sublocation is the host of the public participation process, you end up finding that sublocation getting quite a huge chunk of the money going to that sub-location because majority of the people who participated come from the same location, uh, that place. So what's the relationship between PB and uh, Makweni's health sector? Um, since um, PB comes in at the planning level of uh, the county budget cycle in, Ma in, in Makweni, basically through PB, citizens' inputs are, 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 are collected then they incorporated in the budget proposal document, which is then tabled in uh, the county assembly, then uh, it's appraised and approved. Uh, through PB, McQueen has been able to uh, invest in about 53 dispensaries, medical facilities through the PB process. Yeah. This brings up to a total of about 169 dispensaries. And what McQueen has effectively done in this process is reduce the distance, the average distance to a medical facility from 10 kilometers before PBN devolution to about 4.5 kilometers after PBN devolution. Much as this is the case, you'll find that many of these uh, facilities, most of which are dispensaries, only have, uh, uh, only offer limited uh, healthcare services uh, should a citizen want to, go to vi visit them. And um, they've also been described as operating at bare minimum. This is information coming from the Ministry of Health at um, so generally, and from the sample of uh, counties that we got, it seems like devolution is definitely a good thing because it's given counties uh, or it's given the country some space. 
to discuss what we need in terms of health services within smaller units. And it seems the agreement in many of those smaller units is that we need to increase the number of health staff that we need. Of course, with time, we'll need to measure how, what kind of impact that has on actual service provision. And that's where things get very interesting because increasing the number of health facilities, increasing the number of health workers does not automatically translate. So that's something that we have to actually see whether it will play out. Because it could be that we are just building health facilities, but they are not running. It could be that we are employing people and they are all in Lodwa, not in Loima or in Kibich or elsewhere in Trukana County. So there is still some more work to do to understand how this plays out. And then the last thing, which is what uh, also Caleb said, is the need to consider within county distribution, how is the inequality within the county. And we're seeing counties like Tukana, we're looking at their data, and they're projecting to increase their health workers by a certain percentage, but the distribution of health workers in different sub counties and different hospitals, it's, it's responding to some inequalities, okay? So we, beyond the across the country inequalities, there's still inequalities within the county that we need to consider in um, distribution of uh, hum, uh, health human resource. And of importance to us, I think, is the, uh, the formula which uh, CRA is using. And uh, we've been critically looking at this formula, and we realized that uh, this is a formula which uh, I'm told it was borrowed from uh, South Africa, which compared to Kenya, they've already uh, developed their infrastructure. For example, the, when you come to issues like roads, a county like Elgeo Marakwet, we are still struggling to, uh, to start new roads. And uh, using the formula to, uh, maybe you can, uh, the formula mainly focuses on uh, maintenance of roads which are already existing, and even water projects and other projects. And of great importance to, I think, most of the counties who are present today, uh, because you realize that agriculture is the main economic activity in our counties. And I've been trying to look at the CRA formula to see where agriculture comes out uh, clearly. And you realize that maybe a county like Nairobi, which has uh, the highest population, will get more money which were meant for agriculture and Elgeo Marakwet or maybe Makueni will receive less money which were meant for maybe irrigation and agriculture. So I think as we uh, uh, discuss this, we also need to uh, look for ways of uh, 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 engaging the CRA and uh, even the National Assembly and Senate so that as we move to the next phase of uh, or we amend the formula, some factors are considered that will bring uh, equity to all, uh, all our counties. That first policy was operational for only three years, and the three years have passed. And so the commission is in the process of coming up with another policy. We call it the second policy, identifying marginalized areas. Uh, we want to go lower, as he said. We, we, we no longer want to use the county as our unit of analysis. This is just to improve targeting. Because at times, you know, there are counties that uh, people think are doing so well. The Kiambus, the Kajiados, the Nairobi. And yet, there are pockets of marginalization in such counties. These are the people we want to target. And uh, it's partial. Uh, like, we identify areas, not communities. When 2013, uh, when we did the Commission of Revenue Allocation as a country, they did it without doing costing of functions. And eventually, they gave us a formula, which I can say here that is disadvantageous to majority of the counties, and El Gay Marakwet being one of the leading uh, in terms of being disadvantaged. So when they did that one, they didn't look at so many parameters. And I think even when we are discussing today, we should look at those parameters. When you only say you want to use population, you want to use uh, area, in El Gil Marakwet, we have a serious challenge in terms of terrain. Terrain is a serious issue. We might be the same area uh, square kilometers. We have the same area square kilometers. But El Gil Marakwet and a county like Wasingishu, a county like Baringo, a county like Nandi, we have unique features. So for El Gil Marakwet to do a kilometer of a road in El Gil Marakwet, 
probably can cost 10 times more than a road in Wasingishu or a road in another county. Same to our brothers in Baringo. And then there's this issue on uh, recurrence and development share. We realize, what, as we were looking at the, the budgets from these counties, for example, Samburu and El Gomarapet and uh, Busia and so many, so many counties, that they're struggling to keep within the 70-30 rule. What the PFM acts provide is that uh, you cannot, you, you should not surpass uh, recurrent expenditure of 70%. And most counties are at 69%. Some counties are even at 72% when you look at their budgets. And what it means to get more health workers is recurrent expenditure, isn't it? So what um, the trend has been, for example, in Samburu, in 2014-15 uh, and then 2-16-17, uh, they've been spending on infrastructural projects, which means health facilities, right? So now they have all these health facilities, they've gotten uh, dialysis equipment, they've gotten, they've gotten, um, uh, they've been spending on capital um, uh, expenditure. So now they are in a situation where they need to fill those places with workers, right? And what does it mean? It means you spend on recurrent, but there's this legal um, requirement of 70, 30, what do they do to get more? Um, health workers into their country. So that's an issue that is we've seen in many counties that even if they want to um, recruit health workers, they're still limited by this uh, legal provision.